How's it going everyone? David from DoD Media. Um, today I'm going to be showing you how you can track an item onto a screen or a building side without using a tracker in After Effects. We're going to be using a corner pin style effect to actually create a fake perspective for that image or that item or that logo or whatever it is that you want to track so that it looks like it is embedded in a scene. Let's jump into the tutorial. All you're going to need to do to follow along with this tutorial with your own footage if you want to is a piece of footage that you would like to track something onto and something that you would like to track onto that footage. So the shot I'm going to be working with today is from the little short film that I did uh, where basically my car turns into some evil artificial intelligence that rats me out to the artificial intelligence corona police um, who arrest me because I'm not self-isolating properly. And this is basically the moment in the short film where the car turns evil. And all I did is I turned the ignition on the car so that this pop-up display pops up and then I composited that screen on there so that it looks like it's part of the screen. Now you'll notice a few things. I kept the reflections, the natural reflections of the footage instead of masking out the entire screen because it helps with that, that illusion of perspective to actually have elements from the screen kept in there. Uh, this was actually a little Aperture ALM9 that I used so that I could get a bit of light in here just so that I'd actually be able to see the screen and give it a bit of depth. So let's jump over to this comp that I've made, which is basically the same thing, but without anything else in it. It's just the footage. The only thing I've done is I've added some curves because I stupidly, really stupidly, completely underexposed this shot when I was shooting it. So curves and a lot of noise, but that's OK. I don't mind. So what we're going to be doing is creating a composition, normal composition, which we're then going to fit onto that window. So if I use this phone as an example, imagine this is just a 16 by 9 composition. We place all our items in it and then we're going to physically change the perspective of that using a corner pin effect so that it looks like the perspective is different when actually it's still just a 16 by 9 composition. So I'm going to go ahead and use the same uh, little graphic that I used in the original one, which is a little sad smiley digital face from Neff Company Forever Fun. Thank you, Neff Company. I don't know who you are, but this looks like it's printed on a t-shirt and it served my purposes beautifully. So let's go ahead and use this again. So I'm going to create a new composition, 1920 by 1080, perfect, 16 by 9, because I think that screen, that screen looks like it's about 16 by 9. So it works to have something that fits the size of the screen. So I'm going to drop that little logo there inside the screen. I'm going to scale it down until it looks, you know, looks about the size that I want it to be, maybe about there. Then I'm going to come up to my pen tool and I'm just going to mask around it because I don't actually want any of this to be to be showing up beyond that. I don't want the Neff company and I don't want any potential dust or anything that's on the on the screen on the picture. So then the last thing I'm going to do to this is that, well, you can see this here is not quite black, whereas the background is black. And because we're going to be screening this onto the screen, saying screen a lot, we're going to be using the screen blending mode. And for screen to work properly, it has to be absolute black. Otherwise, you're actually going to see a tiny bit of texture popping up here. So I'm just going to come up to the effects and presets panel and I'm going to find curves. Actually, no, I'll find levels because levels shows me a histogram at the same time. So I'm going to add levels and I'm just going to bring this up until I'm actually reaching that black point there. There we go. Now, if I turn this on and off, you can see that that gray just, it just disappears. Now this is actually black. Cool. Then I'm also going to add a bit of text. I'm going to say error 404. Um, what do computer screens say when they're dying? I'm dying. Except let's have it all caps. Let's have this bit much smaller like so. And then let's bring it down. Okay, and then let's just bring the smiley face up. Is he centered? It looks about centered. Let's just make sure this is centered. Align, center. There we go. Lovely. Now I'm going to take that comp, I'm going to drag it into this, and just overlay it on my footage. Now you can see the black has come through there, so we're just going to change the blending mode of this composition to screen. 
And now all the black in the screen is gone. You can still see a tiny bit. Let's go back in and just fix that. Bring that up to there, that ought to do it. There we go, gone. So now what we want to do is shift the perspective. Now you could use corner pin if you want to. Corner pin is a fantastic effect. It's what loads of planar trackers use, like Mocha uses corner pin to then um, assimilate that data into your footage for you to use. I'm actually going to use After Effects' own CC power pin because power pin gives you a the option of using a grid for perspective. So up here you can turn on and off the grid, which is really cool because it means that it's going to show you horizontal and vertical grid lines so that you really can't, you cannot get that perspective wrong. Okay, so I'm going to come along to a point in the footage that I want to start tracking to and that start, and that starting point for me is going to be when the screen just finishes coming up there. Then I'm going to take my top left and I'm going to put it in the top left corner of the screen. Before I do anything else, I'm going to bring the exposure of this way up until it's really ugly, but just so that I can really see what I'm doing because otherwise I'm, I'm guessing. Okay, so then I'm going to take my top right. I'm going to put top right in that corner there. Then I'll take my bottom left. I'll put it in that bottom left corner. I'll take my bottom right. And I'll put it in that bottom right corner. I think I got that top one a little bit off. So let's bring that down. And now you can see my grid lines give me the perspective. They can see that the screen is slanted on a Y and an X axis, which gives me that 3D perspective. So now that is perfectly composited into that frame. The problem is that it's video, so that is going to change. So what we need to be able to do is track that screen using the corner pins. Now, if you hit U on your keyboard, nothing happens because I didn't keyframe them yet. So we're going to activate all four of these keyframes and then hit U on your keyboard. That's going to bring up those keyframes there. So that is the end of my movement. I'm going to come back to the beginning of my movement. And I'm going to want the screen to fade on maybe about, where can I see the corners accurately? Let's say about there. Frame 10. Frame 10 is going to be where it fades on. So I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to take that corner pin there. I'm going to drag it down to that corner. I'm going to take this corner pin here drag it down there. I think that one might be lower. In fact, might be more like there. I'm going to take that corner pin and put it in that corner roughly. And then this corner pin here and put it about, about there. Let's see. Does that perspective look right? Yeah, no, that looks, that looks about right for there. So then if you've seen any of my tracking tutorials before where I tell you to manually adjust stuff, I don't go through frame by frame. It is a massive waste of time to go through frame by frame and adjust those four parameters. That's four parameters on every frame. You are going to spend the whole day doing that. Instead, you've got your beginning keyframes and your end keyframes. Pick a middle point, give it a half life. So you go to the middle here. That looks like it's roughly the middle between those. And I'm just going to adjust those corner frames to fit more accurately where they should be, as if I had tracked it. Now, another great thing with power pin is that you can select the edges and shift that perspective along if you need to, and it will follow the grid line of that perspective. So it will bend it as it gets further, which is really nice. It's a really nice feature to have on there. So for example, if you were driving straight by a sign and your camera was fixed, the perspective of that would just warp on a on a vertical axis. So you should just be able to keyframe that side to shift along and it would it should superimpose really nicely. Now I have my middle section keyframes. So I'm going to go back to the beginning and I'm going to look at the first half and I'm going to go to the middle of the first keyframes and the middle keyframes. So I'm going to go to the first quarter and adjust from there. And then again, I'm going to go to that first quarter and go in the middle. So I'll be looking at the first eighth and so on and so forth. Okay. That's looking pretty good. So I'll go to the second quarter now and make an eighth there. That's looking, that's actually looking fine. So I don't, I'm not going to change anything there. Then it comes along 
and I'll go to the second half. I'll go to the third quarter, make a third quarter. Now this looks like it needs to come up a bit. That needs to come sideways a bit. That whole line needs to come down. And there we go. Now I'll come to that third quarter again and make an eighth. Uh, that looks, yeah, that looks fine for now. I'll come to the last quarter and make an eighth. Again, that needs to come up there. That's about the only change it would appear. Now you can see that the screen actually, it doesn't just move like that and stop. It ramps down its movement. So it goes at a constant speed. And then at one point it just starts slowly, slowly stopping until it stops. So I need to do a similar thing with these, this keyframe because these keyframes are all linear. So the best way to do that is select them all, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease in. So that's perfect. That should, that should now play as if it's on the screen. Almost, there's a little bit, a little bit odd, but, but again, I mean, I've only spent minutes on this. If you wanted to spend an hour on this, it would look perfect, but that's fine. I'm just gonna work with this. Um, the next thing is that, well, here where it says I'm dying, it's actually appearing on top of an object that would be in front of the screen. So that doesn't make sense. And that is gonna be confusing your brain if you're the viewer thinking, that's not right, that perspective is wrong. Which will just, it will kill the illusion that you're trying to create by compositing this. So what we're gonna do is a bit of rotoscoping, which is basically just masking um, of this ALM9 light. And then we're going to place it on top of this composition so that you think that it's being blocked by it. It'll make you think that it's actually in the frame. So we're just going to duplicate this layer, bring it up on top, select our pen tool. Let's zoom in nice and close. And let's just mask out this section with the light. There we go. Go back to our full screen. Now, because the camera is handheld, there is a little bit of movement, but in this specific shot, it's, it's not enough to have to one, you know, worry about tracking that mask at all. But if your shot has movement in it, more movement than this, and you need to track that mask, you can do so by hitting M and just doing the same thing with these keyframes, starting at the beginning of your movement, the end of your movement, set keyframes on your mask path, tweak it, go to the middle, then create quarters, then create eighths, instead of going through frame by frame. Alternatively, you can try and track the mask using your tracker, but um, if you select your mask, you can see here it brings up your um, mask tracker and you can track your position, position rotation, position scale rotation, perspective. Um, it, sometimes it works, sometimes it really doesn't. I would suggest try it manually first. One thing I will do though is press F just to add a few frames of feathering. So let's go for I don't know, three frames of feathering. There we go. That looks like it is now in front of that footage, but hang on, there's something weird happening here. This is where I'm gonna want my thing to actually fade in. So I'm gonna go Shift Alt T or Shift Command, no Shift Option T if you're on a Mac. Uh, that's gonna bring up the opacity, keyframed already, ready to go, bring that down to zero. And let's go forward five frames. Yeah, five frames to fill in and bring that back up to 100. And now it will fade up from zero to 100 as the screen's coming up, locked in perspective. Lovely. Something weird's happening there. That's, let's bring these keyframes forward by one. Yeah, that's much better. It was moving the corner pins while the screen had already stopped moving. So that's why it looked a bit weird. Okay, so now let's start playing with this thing because again, it's a composition. You can animate everything in here if you want to. For example, I could add, I don't know, a typewriter animation in on this. Like so. There you go. The other thing we could do is what I did in the other one. Um, I added the VR digital glitch effect to it. And then I just keyframed the distortion evolution from here to the end. 
by, I don't know, three times. And that way, it's glitching out. You could also make it a white smiley face instead of the yellow one, so that it looks a little bit more like what would actually be on a screen like this. So you just come back to your composition that it's in and um, what would it be? Tint, I guess. Yeah, there you go. And then you could even add a bit of glow to it if you wanted. And then I'm just going to come back to my original footage and just grade it back down to what it should be. So something like that. I'm going to copy that curves and just paste it on top of this item that we've brought in here on top and just replace that curve so that it matches the other one. And there we go. That would have taken me absolutely ages to try and track on there using a planar tracker. I'd have been going back and forth and back and forth and instead you just make a composition and use the power, power pin or corner pin, whichever one you prefer using. It's just so much easier, so much faster and it doesn't have to be perfect. That's the thing like that. That looks absolutely fine. You don't have to have it frame by frame perfection unless this is some Hollywood budget thing that you're working on, in which case I don't know why you're watching this tutorial. I don't know, I'm just rambling there. But there you go. That is how you track a picture, a logo, a video, whatever you want onto a surface in After Effects without using a tracker. Let me know what you thought of this tutorial and if you've used it to do something, I would love to see what you've done. Uh, tag me on Instagram at DOD Media or on Twitter at DOD Media. I would love to see it. I'd love to be able to see what you guys are actually using these tutorials to achieve. I might eventually make like a mashup compilation of stuff that people have done using my tutorials. That would be that would be pretty cool. All right, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I'll see you soon. Cheers.